Hi, everyone. It is August 10, 2021. The dumbing down of America. Woof! Of Americans. Each generation. They just keep, like, wow. Just ingraining in their brains. You can't achieve. So we're going to get rid of... Reading, writing, math requirements. It's, okay, how come adults don't get that when children go to school, they really, you know, should be uh, learning the basics, for sure, and encouraged to achieve, you know, their uh, highest potential Um, regardless of color of skin. You know, um, set on a path to, yeah, critically think and uh, become the individual that they are, explore their own interests and, ah, scrap it. This is the United States. Forget it. Oregon governor. Signs bill suspending math reading and writing requirements for high school grads. Does that seem like a good thing? Okay. Well, again, I'm going to say it is up to the Americans to set uh, this country on a right course. Not, not right meaning red meaning Republican, morally right. Uh, I don't even know how to address any of this, okay, because it's become so friggin' obvious that these people are literally not only destroying your life by, you know, oh, you got to close down your business because there's a pandemic, and uh, but they're also destroying your children, And it's been going on for years. But now, I mean, it's so blatant. Okay, Brown drops the requirement that high school students prove proficiency in reading, writing, or math before graduation. Good move, Brown. Good move. I guess you want to make sure that the masses stay the masses and the elite stay the elite. All right, I, I, there's a lot going through my mind right now. Oh, it's uh, filled with a lot of curse words, so I won't. But you know what? Uh, these people need to be taken out, not not in a way violent or anything. They need it. what Oregonians. You really that there are people who support her in Oregon. Her move to sign the bill was. Quote, not public until recently because her office did not hold a signing ceremony or issue a press release. Oh, I guess you wanted to keep that silent, Kate. How is it that people can't see? What is happening here? Brown's office did not immediately respond. What a surprise. Foundations for a Better Oregon said in a statement at the time that the bill is intended to, quote, truly reflect what every student needs to thrive in the 21st century. What? Foundations for a better Oregon. Yeah. Uh, Just keep dumbing down Oregonians, the kids, and uh, you'll have a better Oregon. But the bill is intended to, quote, truly reflect what every student needs to thrive. Get rid. Get rid of the requirements. Just graduate students out of high school that can't read, that can't write, can't do math. That's going to make a better Oregon. Supporters of the bill, 
insist that considering math and reading essential skills has been an unfair challenge for students who do not test well. So, scrap it. I didn't test well. I, I ba barely, barely, barely made it out. Um, but of course, this is about black, Latino, Latinx, indigenous, Asian, Pacific Islander, tribal, and students of color. What other colors do you want to put in there? Okay, I'm white. Um, really bad. At one through 12, I didn't do K. But that was because of the home I came from. So you're going to lower the standards for all students. That's equity. Yes, make, make everyone, you know, put them all on the same level. And unfortunately, that level is dropping standards. It's dropping to the lowest denominator instead of picking these children up. But I have to tell you, Okay, the new standards for graduation will help black, Latino, Latinx, indigenous, what a, Asian? What, um, what a, okay. okay. Why do people get so upset about curse words? What a fucking slap in the face for all of these children. You can't cut the mustard. So we're going to lower the standards so you can graduate. It is so demeaning. Why don't people see that? It is so horrible, demeaning. Teachers should have the skills to lift their students up. Not lower expectations. But keep the expectations high for all students. And then it's the teacher's job. Yeah, you encourage, you motivate, and you get them to meet their expectations. Because when you have this feeling that this entire group of kids right here can't cut the mustard, you're racist in the classroom. You are a racist in the classroom. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Republicans who came out against the bill lowers expectations for our kids. Yeah, doesn't it? But there was some bipartisan support. Okay, the leftists are communists, and this is what they do. Americans start Please start recognizing what is happening here in our country. And if you can't do it for your own self, do it for your children. And if you don't do it for your children, you should never have had children because you are not protecting them and you are not putting them on a, a, a path, a trajectory to become an individual that is healthy overall. Yeah, you know, look, they'll, we'll just have more of these people and more of not just this guy, but the others that you see in here, we'll just have more morons, immature. Uh, this is the White House. Okay, uh, apparently... The White House has enlisted Gen Z social media influencer Benny Drama to push young Americans to get vaccinated. Oh my God. How low have we descended? One sec. <laughs> Democracy's calling. <laughs> See you, Daddy. Bye. Hi, my name is Cooper, and this is a day in my life as a White House intern. <laughs> We did a joke. <laughs> hey, everyone. Vogue. 
usually I start off with a big coffee. Sorry, they're like really strict in here. Hey, Jenny, I booked you a nail appointment, love. Yeah, I didn't tell you to do that. It's called initiative. <laughs> Hi, White House, this is Cooper. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, doesn't matter. This is actually the entrance to the West Wing. This is so fun and it's really prestigious. Hey, POTUS. Is Olivia Rodrigo still here? No. We've come a long way in our fight against this virus. We've vaccinated 160 million Americans. Are you getting this all down? Don't worry, Queen. It's all right here. Cooper. Sorry, Miss Jen. Hey, Jen, don't forget to have fun. Spirit fingers, mama. We need to get shots in the arms of every single American. I'm heading to a haircut. Comment if you want me to make more of these. One sec. <laughs> yeah, that's our, that's, that's our country now. This is our country, okay? What the hell? It's a joke. It's a flippin' joke. We're a joke. We're a joke. This, this, what is it? Crocodile? Is, is on a higher level, a higher plane, a higher uh, consciousness, more serious than the majority of Americans, regardless of their positions, like the press secretary, like the White House. Cancel Curry. And you know what? Considering what the students are learning today in our public education system, they'll say, yeah, cancel Curry. A dish name, I think it's, a, isn't it a spice? A, what? Rooted in white Christian supremacy? British colonialism? Really? The Brits brought curry over to uh, India? Uh, nah, I don't think so, because the Brits, their food, mm, pretty bland. This is the idiocy that we live. It's scary. Now, listen to this. Ugh. Atlanta school. They're segregating kids by race. Yes, the school district here has looked into these allegations and says it has taken action. Still, parent Kyla Posey says she can't believe a principal thought separating students according to race was a good idea. We lost sleep trying to figure out, like, why would a person do this? Kyla Posey says she was stunned when she learned about classes segregated by race at Mary Lynn Elementary last year, a practice she says was put in place and condoned by Principal Sharon Briscoe. First, it was just disbelief that I was having this conversation in 2020 with a person that looks just like me, a black woman. It's segregating classrooms. You cannot segregate classrooms. It's, you can't do it. Posey says she found out the school was putting black students in two separate classes with two separate teachers. The white kids were placed in six classes with six different teachers. The parent says she found this out when she let Briscoe know she wanted her child placed in the classroom of a teacher she thought would be a good fit. Posey says the principal said that wouldn't work. She said that that's not one of the black classes and I immediately said, what does that mean? Um, I was confused. I asked for more clarification on, I was like, we have those in the school? And she proceeded to say that, yes, I have decided that um, I'm going to place all of the black students in two classes. Posey says she insisted her child be placed in a class with white students. She says Briscoe explained her child would be isolated. And I explained to her she shouldn't be isolated or punished because I'm unwilling to go along with your illegal and unethical practice. The Posies recorded a call with an assistant principal where they complained about the segregated classes. The administrator confirmed it was the principal's decision and seemed to offer an explanation why the classes were set up this way. Well, you have more black kids too, and then, and then some of them are in a class because of the services that they need. Kyla Posey has filed this discrimination complaint with the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights. Her attorney, Cherie Shields, says what's going on at Mary Lynn is a violation of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 say that you cannot uh, treat one group of people differently based upon race, and that is what is going on at Mary Lynn. Don't you love it? Well, 
You know, I said that sarcastically. This is what's happening in our public education, in our public schools, well, indoctrination centers. Okay. Uh, I don't even know what to say, but this is an article. It was just disbelief. That's what she said. Okay. Uh, segregating students based on the color of their skin. 2021. I remember. I remember the 60s, even though I was very young. I remember what took place. And the 70s, even though, yeah, I was an alcoholic. I did. Oof. Yeah. But I remember enough to know how far we've come. We're going backwards. These people are bringing us backwards. Where are the healthy Americans screaming about this, putting an immediate, an immediate halt to all of this? Where are they? Oh, there are parents out there screaming. There's not enough of them. So the parents who are not doing anything you're complicit with this. Do you understand that? Yeah, you are. Find your courage and start speaking out. It is your job as a parent. You, as a parent, need to protect your child. That means that you need to get your courage activated. Cuban-American parent pulls child out of New York private school after video that openly humiliates and ridicules white women. Shown to students. Yeah, and this guy? Okay. Kendi? He's, he's the CRT guy? <laughs> they, they prop these people up, and they give them platforms. They say the most in inane, insane, stupid things that you would think they would never have a platform again, but they do. They keep going. Ha. Huh. Okay. Yeah. We still have slaveholders. Slaveholders. Said that the United States is still a slaveholders republic. Really? Really, Kendi? Uh, you're a professor, and you live a pretty good life. Yeah, you don't have any integrity, and you get a whole lot of money because this is an agenda. We understand that. Uh, who's holding you back? No one. This is what he said. When the right started pushing for the right and the freedom to open. When the right? Ah, yes, the divide and conquer. Only, only, it, it was the conservatives pushing for the right and the freedom to open back up. I ended up writing this piece in The Atlantic that basically argued that we're still a slaveholder's republic. And what I argued is that the slaveholder, the individual, wanted the freedom to enslave. There's no difference. Well, is this really what you wrote? Because it's... I guess you went to one of those schools that equity was really important because uh, you didn't learn grammar, grammar, grammar. I'm a New Yorker, okay? Uh, so, but, hey, <sighs> equity gave you a very comfortable life. You like it? But his equity is going to really enslave all of the students. And that's what's so sickening about these people. Oh, boy. Well, no difference between that and no... Okay, the slaveholder and the individual saying, I should have the freedom to infect people. I should have the freedom to kill and exploit and harass and terrorize. COVID. Ah, so I guess no one on the left, those Democrats, wanted the schools open. 
I think you're wrong, Kendi. But you're wrong about pretty much everything. But you continue on. See? Ah, this is a country. We have so much freedom to never hold anybody accountable for anything. And the freedom that you, Kendi, have to just go on, spew the bullshit that you do, gaslight Americans. See? That's freedom. in critical race theory titled hashtag black lives matter joining me to discuss former princeton professor dr carol swain dr swain great to see you as always here is a course description quote it seeks to document the forms of dispossession that black americans face and offers a critical examination of the prison industrial complex police brutality urban poverty and white supremacy in the u.s dr swain does this offering by your former employer shock you in any way no, uh, critical race theory was around, it's been around for decades, but what we do know is that it did not stay on the university campuses, that it has permeated every sector of our society. And we know the harmful effects of taking that dangerous ideology that divides Americans into the K through 12 classrooms. And so I think that we now see that there needs to be a reckoning with universities, especially those that are, are turning out the future leaders of tomorrow, the Ivy League schools, where the graduates dominate our, our society. But to push back on that concept for a moment, we've seen in recent weeks, recent months, a push back on the elite institutions, on your Ivy Leagues, from an employer perspective saying, I don't know if I love the employees that are coming out of these Ivy League and other elite schools. Don't courses like this support that notion that, hey, I'm going to get a better worker coming from somewhere else where they've actually been taught skills and not this? Absolutely correct. And we need to stop selecting Supreme Court just justices almost exclusively from that environment. And while I have your audience, I'd like to point out that I have a new book on critical race theory that offers strategies on how to fight back. It explains what it is, where it came from, how it impacts our society, why it's un-American. It runs counter to our Constitution, and we don't have to stand for it. And, and don't leave a comment saying, oh, oh, she's all about promoting herself. This woman, wow, I have tremendous respect for her. And there's nothing wrong with saying, I have a new book about critical race theory, tactics that people can use to get rid of critical race theory, Black Eye for America. Wow, what a great title. Okay, listen to this woman. Oh. My name is Fallon Clark, and I am representing Black Tennessee. I'm just going to hop right, right in. So... CRT, for such a complex, controversial topic, I have a very simple question. Why? What is the purpose? What does it solve? What does it actually teach? Imagine two childhood friends, Jenny and Sharon. They've been friends since they were two years old, sharing everything, birthdays, sleepovers, and a number of firsts. They grow up and enter the public school system where CRT is being taught. Jenny is reminded she's white and learns about the atrocities committed to maintain her white privilege. And Sharon is reminded she's black and every shortcoming and challenge she faces is because of Jenny's white privilege. Tensions rise, hostility creeps in, and just like that, the friendship is over. Now, perhaps my example is a little extreme, but not too far-fetched. It actually sounds familiar. Children don't see race until you and I show it to them. So I can tell you what CRT teaches. Critical race theory does nothing but perpetuate the same narrative. It plants the same seed of divisiveness. So why do you want to keep telling the same distorted and divisive story, and especially to our children in the form of education? I ask again, why? Does it help our lagging test scores? Does it equip our children with the tools needed to enter the real world? And by real world, I mean workforce and making a better living, financial literacy, and proper decision making. Does it teach our children to value one another regardless of skin color? Does it teach our children to take pride in our country, a country where a man can be a slave, come from nothing, yet give birth to a generation of children that have everything? 
I remember conversing amongst a group of black friends, and we all reflected on our own childhood and how black history was a small section in a history book comprised of only slavery, Jim Crow laws, and civil rights. Slavery ended in 1865. 146 years worth of information since then, and yet it's filled with nothing but slavery, trauma, inferiority, and that's all the history anyone ever shoves in front of us. Again, why? What is the purpose? CRT is not an accurate account of black history or American history for that matter, and it is imperative we do not allow it to pass as such. I'm sure everyone here is aware of the 2018 and 2019 state report card. That's the only one I could find available online. Less than 33% of Hamilton County students were found to read at grade level. When critical race theory is mentioned, the average individual cannot define it, and our children most certainly cannot define, let alone comprehend its complexities. I value teachers tremendously. My own father is an educator, but teachers are teachers, and they do not, and nor does anyone on the board replace the parents. Many of you may be thinking, CRT is banned in the state of Tennessee. This is not a problem in the Hamilton County School District. Well, I do have with me an assignment given to my son directly following the banning of CRT in our state. He was provided with the banning article with a writing prompt. What is the importance of CRT in the public school system? This is a problem, and I would like it noted. The focus should be our core subjects, subjects that are not excelling in language arts, math, science, and social studies, with the addition of trades, work readiness, and financial literacy. And let's be clear, the fact we are not excelling in these subjects has nothing to do with race. My son is in the gifted program. He has a 4.0. He scored a 25 on the ACT as a sophomore with absolutely no prep. That leads me to the importance of school choice, and as highlighted in the HCD emission statement, the environment of our schools, and how all of this correlates with critical race theory. I grew up in Mallon, Tennessee, graduated from Mallon High School. At the time I attended, blacks made up 15% of the school population. Whites were dominant. As I reflect on my experience, not once did I feel inferior, as CRT suggests, not once was I oppressed. I, the bar and expectations that were set at the time were for all students, regardless of race. I left the public school system and my family knowing I could accomplish anything and my skin color was the very least of my concern. Fast forward to having a child who attended Orchard Knot Middle and currently attends Brainerd High School. In both instances, he has been stereotyped, bar lowered, viewed as being at a disadvantage, and evil, even labeled with phrases like, he's not like the rest of them, by an actual teacher. CR CRT would do nothing but reinforce this culture of inferiority and further alienate our black children. We must not teach children that any challenge we must not teach black children that any challenge or burden that they may face comes from white people. We must not teach white children that they are the cause of, of the plight in black America. We must teach all children, regardless of color, you are the writer of your own life. In any system set in place that threatens your dignity and freedom, you have the power to eliminate one voice and one vote at a time. I urge you not to let CRT into our schools, stand firm on the Tennessee banning of CRT, and hold every single educator accountable who has the audacity to take matters into their own hands. Thank you. Do I see a standing ovation? <laughs> oh, right. I can't see you guys. <laughs> okay. Black conservative view. And I will link below uh, what this uh, channel, um, well, I guess this guy, uh, but it's a caricature, um, has a lot of good things to say. And at the end, he says, this is the best country. And how many people have said that today? This is by far number one. We are number one, actually in terms of everything that we have done to heal the racism and provide opportunities for all. No other country, no other country comes close to the United States in terms of what we've done. So to see, to see this agenda manifest, school board, members, teachers, to see it go on, going on from the White House, the Department of Education. It is so heartbreaking, and it's got to be stopped. It's so unbelievably abusive 
to children. It's, this is abuse. And I feel sorry for the children who are coming from parents, their homes, where the parents support this. That means they are set on a trajectory to become adults that will literally leave a very dark, dark footprint throughout their life. You know, and it is, it's the trickle-down theory, universities. Train future teachers to push critical race theory and social justice. Yes, mom and dad, those of you who are footing the bill for your daughters and sons. Oops, did I offend? Well, um, to go to a university, and wow, are they rather expensive today, to become social justice warriors? Is this really what you want from them? Okay. Colleges across the United States are showing education students how to apply critical race theory and social justice to their profession. And the curricula focuses on K through 12. Now, if you haven't seen any of my videos or any of the very many videos out there equating what's happening in our schools to what happened during the Mao years in China, well, get with it, because that's what this is about. That's what this is about. You got the oppressor, the white kids, and you got the oppressed, non-white kids. It's that binary. It's the divide and conquer. It's the, yeah, uh, setting up of a lot of of danger coming to the white kids. I, it's really hard for me when everything becomes so obvious. University students will learn about queer feelings and activist skills. Courses like queer desires and queer feelings will be offered this coming academic year at America's public universities. Wow. Well, I guess you queers are different than everybody else. You got different desires. You got different feelings. You got, it's an agenda, so don't take it out on people who are gay or lesbian or identify as queer, don't do that. Because there's an awful lot who are very against, very against this agenda, and they see it for what it is. Please. <sighs> These universities, okay, this, uh, you know, look, we do have... Uh, there has been a very successful infiltration into every institution in this country, including the federal government. China has infiltrated. China gives an awful lot of money to universities. And all of this is the Marxist Mao uh, indoctrination and it is so dangerous, but let me just go through some headlines. Uh, Pennsylvania allocates 2.5 million of COVID relief money on diversity equity programs. Really, COVID relief money. How many of you guys in Pennsylvania, um, or how many do you know, that have had their businesses closed down, they can't pay their mortgage, they can't pay their rent, but you got 2.5 Five million going for diversity and equity. Equity is a Marxist term. Americans, you really do need to turn that light back on in your head 
and do some research, independent you, and do some critical thinking. Stop being the robot of mainstream media and government officials telling you what is going on because we're, we're so, we're, we're, we're neck deep in this agenda, neck deep. California may spend $1 million on men's menstrual products. I don't know what to say. Harvard promotes app that compares BLM to religious awakening. Yeah, Dharma, Buddha, Black Lives Matter. Wow. Okay, the Dharma of Black Lives Matter. These are classes offered. The Dharma. The, um, Dharma, Hindus believe that Dharma is the set of moral rules uh, that govern the universe, like natural law, uh, it's um, truth, reality, uh, the dharma of Black Lives Matter, because, wow, don't they re exhibit examples of moral moral people I, I look connecting spiritual practices to black lives matter smash it up loot and set set cities on fire okay dharma yeah call it human milk feeding doctors announce new gender inclusive terms the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine recently said it would stop using language it deems discriminatory to the LGBTQI plus community. I, I don't know what I is. Yeah, it's, it's very offensive. How dare, how dare you call it breastfeeding. Do you see what's happening? They're destroying the family. And that's what Black Lives Matter, by the way. Yeah, they had it on their website. Take down that nuclear family. Well, that has become obvious as well. No more females and males and menstrual products to men. Uh, human milk feeding because, oh, that might insult somebody from this community. Well, I say to this community, if it insults you, grow a pair. Calling a woman female is sexist. Really? Leftists say it's also demeaning. Yeah. Calling a woman female is... It dehumanizes women. Well, guess what? I don't feel all that demeaned or uh, dehumanized. And I don't think a lot of females do. Okay. This is what your kids are learning, and this is what you're paying for? Memo reveals University of North Carolina plan to sideline diversity of thought. Wow, really? Huh. Yep. The Husband School of Journalism and Media considered quote, diversity of thought, unquote, to be in conflict with its efforts to achieve social justice objectives. All right, Susan King, um, the dean of the journalism school, said in a memo to the university chancellor, quote, there is a fundamental conflict between efforts to promote racial equity and understandings of structural racism and efforts to promote diversity of thought. These two things can't sit side by side without coming into conflict. So we have to get rid of diversity of thought. And that's what they have done. Because you cannot have a different thought, a different take, a different view. These kids are sitting in schools and they are being humiliated, punished, 
for having a different thought about what is taking place with this CRT, the diversity, equity, and uh, inclusiveness. No, they can't. That, hello, baby boomers, don't you remember growing up? Oh, the big threat, communism? Well, you know, they got state news, propaganda, and, well, they couldn't exercise their freedom. They couldn't exercise freedom of thought. That's where we are now, Americans. Get it? Wow, ma'am. Okay, we've got a whole lot of people who don't care what's happening to this country. We have an awful lot of people who may care, but mm, I have no courage, and I'm just going to go along with everything. So, whew, Harvard Law supports advocacy for polyamorous relationships. Really? Uh, I went to law school. And, you know, there was no real advocacy for any kind of relationship. There was boot camp, three years of it in law school to understand the law. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, how about teaching assistant Doc's point on a conservative student's Black Panther essay, White People Can't Experience Racism? Well, uh, that teaching assistant told a student that white people can't experience racism when asked about a grade she got on a paper. The professor of the class agreed that white people can't experience racism and agreed to give her paper another look. All right, well, this is recent, and will that professor suddenly be canceled? How dare you think that white people can experience racism? This is what your money, you know, this is such, it's so sick and twisted. And all of this stuff is going into these young minds and you're paying for your children to become sick and twisted. Four months later, UCLA has still not released contracts with Chinese government. Hmm. Public record request. We ain't turning over anything we don't want to because we're living in this new world order and we don't have to do anything anymore because there is no rule of law in the good old United States because we've been taken over already. So, you might want to check out Campus Reform. Oh boy, a whole lot of stuff here. You'll see what, you know, why we have so many young with these twisted minds that are gung-ho socialists and social justice warriors because this is what these professors and everybody, you know, involved in universities and colleges, this is what they've done to them. They have indoctrinated them to a point where you can't even have a conversation with them anymore. We're in trouble. We're in big trouble. It's happening, you know. Woke writer defends her article that calls for more abortions on TV. Says, if there is a God, I believe that God loves abortion. Yeah, we're in trouble. <laughs>